All right, so I play Scouter and I also play Shadow Hunter. I play them both transformation and I thought it'd be a good time to talk about them. They're pretty similar to the point where I think I can fit them both in one video. I initially wanted to do this as a video per class, but I play both of them transformation, so why the hell not? All right, so real quick, we're gonna go over some pros and cons of the classes. Uh, for me personally, I love the class fantasy of the transformation classes. It's just fun to me, it's cool, and that's what drew me to the classes. Another thing about them is that for progging or just people who are getting into the game, they are very good classes for the sense that they don't require too much thought in what you're doing for skills, and they both come with their own kind of safety. What I mean by that is that scouters, when they transform, they get a barrier. When shadow hunters transform, they get a health, a small heal. They give you just kind of a little bit of a safety net for it, and it's just kind of nice to have. Now, next good thing about them is something that's always talked about when it comes to these classes is that they are two gem classes basically majority of your damage is always going to come from being in transformation you have gems for all your demonic skills or all your sync skills it's all condensed into one gem same thing with the cooldown that is all condensed into one gem so you don't really need to go too hard on gems but you will need to high level them which is also kind of a con that we'll get into but yes they are cheaper in a sense of gems if you're learning lost art the first time like i did or if you're trying to prog content like I'm going to be doing, they are a good class for that because they are a well-balanced class. They have decent damage, decent stagger, they get movement speed when they are transformed, so they're good for doing mechanics. They're just overall a well-rounded class and something you can do all the content with pretty well. They also have range on some of their skills, more so on Scouter than the Shadow Hunter, but it's pretty valuable to have skills that you can use at a distance for damaging during certain mechanics or doing things like clearing the screen of balls and the totems or whatever you call them and clown. So how can there be a downside to being a two gem class? Well, for example, it's not really the gems for per se that causes it to be also a con, it's the fact of the class design. So these classes, you don't need that many tripods. All you need the ones that boost your meter gain. That means you have a lot of tripods going to very little use for any benefit to you. And along with that is that you cannot level up or alter your demon or sync skills. You can only add runes to them and that is a big con to the classes because that means it makes your engravings and your gem levels more and more required to kind of go on the top end of those because you just need them because you won't get that many other sources of power as you would as other classes. And something that is common with them in a lot of classes is they run spec. Not only that, but they run all of the meta engravings. They run keen blunt run weapon, they run grudge, they run adrenaline. So gearing these up, not gonna be cheap, especially when you need certain spec to hit so you can get transformation with Xbox skills. So my biggest gripe with the class is how they handle mechanics. So what I mean by that is the best way to talk about it is gonna be talking about like his K3. That's where this is really relevant and this is where like a fight that I absolutely do not do as a transformation. So let's list off all the mechanics you have to do in order. First you have the swamp, then you have the statues, then you have typing, then you have stagger, then you have swamp again, then you have tentacles, you have that mash space thing, and any time during all this time, you can have Medusa happen. Even with average damage parties, you're still going to go through these phases pretty quick. With higher damage parties, you're just going to shotgun through all these mechanics, and in any of these times, you're never going to be able to get a full transfer. You might just pop it, hit a few skills, and it's time to do the next mechanic. This is what makes the class feel pretty bad when you're doing some content, and I, there's not really much that can be done about it. BR and Cube? Yeah, they have these same kind of flaws. BR, you're waiting so much time for things to spawn that your transformation is going to run out. Cube, you just don't gain enough meter while you're doing the floors, and it's just not a good experience doing either one of them. Alright, so I've talked about how transformation classes feel in content and just overall. But now I want to go into the difference between the two different transformation classes that we have. Let's start off with gearing. So Scouter is by far a cheaper class to gear up and maintain than Shadow Hunter. The main reason, well, two main reasons is going to be one, Scouter can run a level one class gear. So they do not need a book, they just need a plus five accessory and that's all they need. Uh, the second thing is going to be that they can optimally run barricade because when they transform they get a shield so they're always going to get that barricade damage when they transform which is going to be the majority of the damage output. Since barricade is a very, very off meta engraving, not many classes use it, uh, that makes their accessories potentially to buy with barricade a lot cheaper. When it comes to gameplay, there's, there's a little few key differences. Now, for example, spec on Shadow Hunter does affect its transformation time. It does not affect your transformation time on Scouter. However, you still want a higher spec for obviously damage output and also less skills to use to transform. So Shadow Hunter's transformation is on a timer. You just get a certain amount of time depending on your spec. Scouter, on the other hand, you get a shield when you transform, but when that shield goes, that's it, you're de-transformed. 
And then so also unique to Scouter is the fact that the engraving allows it so when you de-transform naturally, that means not taking too much damage or not forcefully doing it yourself, you will retain 40% of your battery charge. This is why you'll see Scouters open up with their ult so they can get their battery charge started and then just keep momentum going from there. Now surprisingly, the time to transform is probably about the same on both classes to be honest. Because Scouter has so much startup animation on its skills that are going to give you the meter that it evens out to doing, you know, like two or three skills on Scouter is going to be maybe even a little bit longer than doing like five skills on a Shadow Hunter. And that is including with a 40% on the Evolution Legacy, the class engraving. And since those drone skills have such a long startup animation, that also gives them a lot more room to whiff because you're using your drone to shoot out missiles for one of them, the most important one, which it's multiple hits and it's just gonna take a little time to start up. So there is a chance for whiffing that and that can take a huge hit to your transformation time. So for not being transformed, I would say I definitely prefer Shadowhunter because there's less commitment on the E moves and overall you just shotgun them out real fast. The big pro would be on Scouter is the fact that they are ranged skills. So again, for ball clearing and stuff like that on Clown, very good to have. So in transforming with Shadowhunter, you basically just use your movement skill that's going to give you a little damage buff. And then you hit as many S's and A's as you can. Now Scouter has a little gimmick while it's transformed, and the fact is that when you do Q or you do Space Bar, the skill that you do right after that will get a speed or damage boost or both. So QE gives you a extra hit and a lot faster, and then QR is a lot faster as well. That gimmick is what makes Scouter transformation a little bit more fun to me than Shadow Hunters. With all that being said, there is one big flaw with Scouter's transformation as opposed to Shadow Hunters. Scouter's counter is on the R key. That is your second strongest skill and thing you want basically on cooldown at all times. It is by default a 9 second cooldown, which is about double of what Shadowhunter's cooldown is on their counter. And also their counter is not their highest damage skill, it is not their highest priority. So being transformation scouter and being transformed as a scouter, hitting a counter is just kind of getting lucky for the most part because there's not going to be too many moments where you're holding on to that R skill. That is something I dislike about the scouter. I really wish they had a counter on their W or A, their less priority moves. And you probably ask, hey, so if you don't really like all the things about these classes, why not try their other counterpots? Why not try AT? Why not try Perfect Depression? Uh, the fact is, I like the class fantasy transformation, and I just don't really feel the point of, say, playing a back attack assassin as a shadow hunter when I could just play Reaper or Deathblade on a class that is better designed for that kind of gameplay. And the same thing goes with why would I play an AT scouter when I can play literally any other gunner. Those are of course my opinion. I may give Perfect Depression again a shot. I don't know, it depends if I get any offset gear because I'm not out here trying to buy that kind of stuff. But yeah, that is how I feel about Shadow Hunter and Scouter Transformation class. I figured I'd give my experience on how I've done these classes so far and how I feel about them. Moving forward, I think one of them will be dropped. There's a higher chance that Shadowhunter is going to be dropped because the Scouter rolled a 97 class. But it's not like I dislike the classes, it's just more the fact that I want to have varied experiences on my classes when it comes to my roster sets. So yeah, I just wanted to do a different take on talking about classes as opposed to the normal, hey, this is my build, this is how I do it. Uh, this is kind of more so talking about how I felt about the class, how you may feel about the class, and kind of a little more for people to figure out if this class is something they might actually enjoy. Additionally, I could also do these kind of videos for Bard, Paladin, Scrapper, uh, Tactically Sork, uh, Glavier, Arcana, and Reaper, because those are all classes that I have like 470 or 460 and above sets and stuff like that. So any comments, any feedback, any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to like or do all that kind of shit. That's it.